Today, I want to make a ladle. And to start with, I have a piece of 16 gauge steel that I need to mark out and get cut out. So to mark this out, since I don't have a compass, I'm just going to go ahead and use this disc, which is four and a half, and that will be plenty for a ladle. And I'll probably leave this little point out here. I like to have something for the handle to attach to, and it makes it look kind of nice. Now, I don't worry about cleaning up these edges too much. I finish that in the end. You can go ahead and round all that off if you want. What I use to dish is I have this eye bolt friend give me. It has an inside diameter of about an inch and three quarters. And it works really good for this. It's a cheap way to do it instead of buying a, a dishing tool. And I just throw this into the vise. Now the heats go really fast on this since it's just a very thin piece of steel. So I'm not gonna do a whole lot of talking. I'm just gonna get right to it and then just do a time lapse. Now I've got this dished out, and if you're looking for a rougher look on a ladle, this is fine. You can leave it like this, maybe clean up these edges. But I like to go a step further and try to get this as smooth as possible. So the first step in that is I'm gonna take and wire wheel this really well so I can get most of the forge scale off. The next process I do, we're gonna be planishing it, and it's just gonna knock any extra forge scale off of it and make it look really nice and clean and it would be ready and we can get rid of all these deformities in this, make it look really nice. Now I don't need this anymore, it's still a little hot. But there's two options you can use for this. This is a railroad bolt and I'm sure you've seen these before. But I forge this one down into a fuller on this end that I can mount in the vise or I can flip it upside down and I ground off the, well, the top of the bolt just so it was smoother up here. And then my other option is a ball hitch, which I tend to use because it's pretty nice for this operation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to planish this right here. I'm just going to tap it all over. What it's going to do is essentially work harden it so it's a little bit stiffer because these you can kind of bend this right now. And it'll also get off the rest of the forge scale. And since this is kind of a loud and annoying project, I'm going to go ahead and go to a time lapse once again.
So I finished planishing this, and you see it turns out a lot smoother. Kind of gets out all the imperfections that were around the, the edge of the bowl here. Now really all I have to do is just grind all this flush so it looks nice and flat across the top. I'll do that on the belt sander. But if you already cut this flat to begin with, you really don't have to mess with this. I leave them kind of jagged because if I have to correct something anyways, I'm already grinding it. And then you don't have to have this at all. I leave it just to give me a little bit more surface area to rivet the handle to and a kind of nice transition up to the handle. I've got the top edge of this bowl sanded down. It's looking good. Now I can set that down for a little bit and focus on the handle. I have a half inch piece of round bar and I'm gonna go ahead and forge that down. I'm gonna run a taper out on the end, probably four inches, and then I'll probably do a two-sided taper around eight inches. Just gonna guess my eight inches. Let's say probably about in there. I'm going to take this down to half the thickness of the bar and then I'm going to go ahead and taper this out and I need to be right around eight inches it really doesn't matter but this will be the handle that you actually grab a hold of this will be the shaft leading down to the ladle. I'm going to start rounding this off. I'm going to take it to octagon and then on to round. I'm going to flatten all this out. I've got this all squared away. It's nice and consistent all the way through the bar. It's kind of like just a real long spear is what it looks like. But I'm going to start beveling the edge of this. I'm going to be working right here on the side of the anvil. And I'm going to be using real low heats and working my way up the bar and both sides. And I'm not super great at hitting on this far side. So I may do some awkward things. I may block the camera every once in a while. 
but that's the best I can do. But essentially, I just want to have a, a tape or both sides beveled all the way to the end so it looks like a, a nice kind of broad leaf all the way to the top, almost like a corn leaf. Now, I don't want this thing crazy hot because there's really no point to that. It's a little bit easier to bevel if you just take your time, work up the bar. Don't take too big a swing because if you do, you end up hitting the crown and you want to leave this center of this kind of nice and sharp the best you can. And then I'll move over here and work the far side. Now I just got done forging that. If you can see it, you can see the bevel in it. Now it takes a lot of finagling to get it this straight. And if you want to just do it the quick route, just flatten all this off and then grind it. I think it's good practice to bevel that in. Now it probably took me, I would say at least 45 minutes to do that. It wants to twist and then you bevel the other side, it'll twist back and then by the time you're done, you kind of got to tweak everything, hit it on the side to get it straight, but it works out really good. It looks like a real broad leaf, kind of like a spear right now, but I'm going to fold the end over just to, for the handle. This will be where you put your hand, and then down here will be where it attaches to the ladle. Now I cut this at my bench, but I'm going to go ahead and I've got an inch and a half mass here at the end. I'm going to go ahead and flatten it down. Give this just a little bit of a point. I'm going to try to fold her down in the between here just to give it a little bit of a different look and then my rivets will be on either side of the the fuller. Now I realized after the fact that I missed some recording and to get this fullered in right here I use what I like to call the poor man's guillotine where I just put this piece in between my legs and I set a bar on top of my fuller I just strike down on top of it until I get that right there. Now I've already finished the filing. I just kind of cleaned this up a little bit, just get the sharp edges off and then contoured this just a little bit. It didn't need very much. And now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get a touch mark put into it and then I'm going to start contouring this to fit the shape of the ladle bowl. Oh, that was the wrong way. I have it fitted up. And I use a wooden block just because I don't want to damage the touch mark, deform that too much. But it just has to fit somewhat snug to that. And now I'm going to move on to the top of the handle here and I just want to fold this over and maybe have a little swoop on it and to do that I have some bending dogs that I made right here that just fit into my vise and then I can adjust them for whatever distance I need. They work really nice but I'll just bend it around this in the vise 
So I need to run another heat. And then it, after that, I really, I'm really i probably going to spend some time and make sure everything's nice and straight. And I'll probably need to adjust the handle just ever so slightly so it, it contours right whenever it comes up to ladle. You don't want just perfectly straight stem. It looks a little strange. I'm going to go ahead and get the rivets done for this. And for the rivets, I'm going to use quarter inch material. And I'm going to use a half inch bolster plate that I just drilled a quarter inch bolt through or hole through. And I'm just going to go ahead and round this off. Now, cold riveting is easier because I don't have to heat this whole thing back up if I can't get it all the way down. So that's just the route I run with it. But quarter inch rivets, pretty overkill for this operation. I don't need that much, but. Might as well use it. I'm just going to form this. I have my top hole marked out. The top one's not near as important as the bottom. So you just have to have it roughly where you want it to be. Now, since I have the top hole drilled, I have a quarter inch bolt and I just use this for fit up just to make sure I get this lined up correctly. I like to get this pretty snug. That way the bowl can't move and I can kind of work on getting this all lined up. Now, for getting this thing level, or at least straight, I like to use just a little framing square that I happen to have. And all I do is just set it across the bowl, and then I line up my handle, just kind of eyeballing it, just to where it looks pretty straight. Just keep tweaking it. That looks pretty good. And then I can go ahead, just take my marker, and mark the back side of this, then I can drill this hole out. There we go. Everything is drilled out. Now all I have to do is take this inside and I need to wash it pretty good. I like to knock all the forge scale off if there is any with a wire wheel take it inside and scrub it a few times with just dish soap and I'll bring it outside and then go ahead and heat it back up in the forge just slightly and then finish it with beeswax, both of them, because once these are together, I mean, that's it. So to make sure there's beeswax, the coating behind the, the handle, that's what I like to do. And then I'll go ahead and cold rivet 
the rest of this handle in. I've got everything black and I'm ready to set these rivets. Now I don't have a monkey tool, I just never got around to making one. And the easiest way I found is just to set a nut on top of there and then just smash it down as long as the rivet doesn't poke through there. I've already got this one set and I'm ready to start peening this one down. Well, it worked out pretty good. Putting these cold rivets in is quite a workout. Now I put a little bit of beeswax on there just to protect those, heated them up just a little bit, probably around 400. And I think it turned out great. It's just time to go make some soup. Thanks for watching.